Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word. It is the truth. We do receive it. We thank you it's being written in our heart and mind. Thank you for revelation you're bringing forth this night. We do take hold of it and be a doer of it and see the fruit of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. We're sharing with you currently on the subject of knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. We've talked about the fact that we must get revelation knowledge, and that comes revealed by the Holy Spirit, and that we also then must come to the place of spiritual understanding, and then come to have spiritual wisdom. We begin here in Isaiah chapter 11. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. These were all upon Jesus, and now that we are in Christ, they are now upon us, and they are to accomplish the things that God purposes for us in our life. We pointed out the fact that we are to get revelation knowledge, which comes by the Holy Spirit. And we pointed out that as we grow in knowledge, as we saw, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, it indicates that you and I are to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're to grow and get the knowledge of God, and that is so important. As we grow in knowledge, you and I are going to come and grow up to the place of perfection and understanding. And that is important because we're talking about spiritual understanding at the moment. And we see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. We've looked at this the last time we were together. And understanding the King James has made a critical error here, but we'll point out what's, what the truth is. Brethren, be not children. This is the word pedion. If you hear for the first time, we refer to information in the lower window and explain it. It's talking about the young child. Be not a young child in understanding. Howbeit, in malice, which would be doing something ill, terrible, ill will, desire to hurt someone, be nepiaza, which means a babe or infant. Otherwise, it's saying you're not supposed to be doing that because a babe wouldn't do those kind of things. But then he comes on, he says, but in understanding, not be men. When we put the cursor over the word be, this is the word genomai in the Greek, which means become showing a process in effect to bring that result in our life. It also, because it is a command to you and me, the tense voice and mood is important to look at to understand what's exactly being said. It's imperative mood, that's a command. We are commanded to become. And because it's present tense, that means ongoingly. The present tense means continuous ongoing action. So this is commanding you and me in understanding, be becoming what? Not men. This is the word teleos, which means perfect. It has been translated perfect correctly 17 times out of the 19 uses. One of full age over in Hebrews 6, or Hebrews 5, and then one time man here erroneously. Young's corrects the error that you would become perfect. So that tells us something. You're going to go on to perfection. And how are you going to go on to perfection? Because you're going to get spiritual understanding. And we pointed out the scripture before, but we'll bring it again. In Ephesians chapter 4, the fivefold ministry of the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, the ones that are truly bringing forth the truth, are for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, because they do the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ is to be built up, become strong, mighty. And this is to happen until we all might come, not that this is automatic. The reason is because we talk about this often, this mood, whenever the subjunctive mood is seen, it's a conditional statement that we might come to the unity of the faith and to the, this is the word for knowledge, but it's the word precise, correct knowledge in the Greek, the precise, correct knowledge of the Son of God, as we are getting this word in us, to what? To the perfect man. We're going to come to perfection. This is that same word, teleos, perfect man. And then it says, unto the measure of the stature. And the stature is actually a metaphor in the Greek, meaning of an attained state for a thing. We're going to come to the measure of the attained state. 
that we are to arrive at, which is of the fullness of Christ. We're to grow up in everything. And as you get knowledge and then you act upon the knowledge of God, you're going to get spiritual understanding that's going to be imparted to you, which is important to understand. And uh, we're going to go back over a few of the things that we pointed out before. First of all, knowledge is having the spiritual facts of the Word of God that are revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. It's not you interpreting things or just know, figuring it out in your mind. It's revelation by the Holy Spirit. It's revealed. This, of course, is why in uh, like Ephesians chapter 1, down here in verse 17, when he said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the what? In the precise, correct knowledge of Him. We're going to get, we get revelation. We don't interpret anything. We get revelation by the Holy Spirit as we believe the Word. So spiritual knowledge will come to us by revelation from the Holy Spirit. Spiritual understanding comes to us that is imparted to us by God based on us acting upon and, and doing what the Word says of that knowledge, working that in our life so that then we will come to a spiritual understanding having done the Word of God. And you'll see, we we'll point this out again. And wisdom is based on both having revelation, knowledge, and spiritual understanding that comes once we have come to the place of knowing how to walk in the way of the Word of God and we continue in it, we're going to come to the place of having wisdom in all things. That is important. And we pointed this out before, but we'll bring it up again. The deliverance is a very good subject that you can see this. When you approach the subject of deliverance, first you get the knowledge of God of what the Word says about it. So you have some revelation about it. But you don't know anything about it until you start acting upon it as far as the understanding of it. Once you start doing the deliverance, you'll start understanding how the demons come out. You'll start understanding the activity that the enemy will try to bring against you. You'll understand the network of it as you are doing it. And you'll, the spiritual understanding will be imparted to you as you do the Word. And then you'll come to the place of having wisdom when you've been doing this for some time where you have insight and you have uh, insight and skill that you will know what to do in every situation, which is what wisdom will produce in our life. Now, in spiritual understanding, we want to go back over some of the things that we talked about the last time. First of all, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 10, he called the multitude and he said to them, Here, this is a commanding word to us again ongoingly, imperative mood, present tense. And what do we be continually hearing? The Word of God. So we can get the Word in us. It'll be written in our heart. It gets written in our mind in the New Testament. We get revelation by the Holy Spirit. And then he said, and understand. And this is talking about spiritual understanding that we are to gain. And it's ongoingly to happen in our life. And it's not talking about just understanding the Word. It's talking about spiritual understanding that comes from the Word and the application of it in your life, as you will see in a moment. When we come over to the parable of the sower, we pointed this out the last time, but it's very important to understand. In Matthew's account, the parable of the sower is where the Word is sown in the different types of ground, which are a type of the heart, and the activity of that word and what, how the enemy also comes against to try to stop the fruit from coming forth and the good ground is that which produces the fruit. So verse 19 says, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, so he's heard it, now it says, understandeth it. Notice it, it is not, it's italicized. Anytime you see something italicized in the King James, it's not in the Greek. It's been added by the translators. They just thought they were in, that that's what it was talking about. But it's not talking about that. It's talking about having spiritual understanding because this is what's called a participle in the Greek, which is an adjective, a verbal adjective, and it would be translated having spiritual, having understanding or having spiritual understanding. Not talking about what it's talking about. The it is not there. If you don't have the spiritual understanding, then comes the wicked one and catches the way that was sown in his heart. 
This is not just talking about having understanding of what the word in it from a mental point. Because if you did have something, how is the devil going to come and just take it out of you unless you turned away from it in some way? It's not talking about that. But this is talking about if you don't have spiritual understanding, the devil can take it out because you haven't worked it in your life, as you will see. Now, we come down to verse 23, and we see about the good ground, which is producing the fruit. He that receives seed into the good ground is he that's hearing the word, he's hearing it, and understandeth, he has the understanding. Remember, it, it's not there, it's been added by the translator. He has the understanding, this spiritual understanding, and that's important. And when it, then it says, which also is not a good translation here. It is this where it's a particle in the Greek day, which really means in this sense, uh, surely, certainly, indeed, in reality, bearing fruit, which is surely and certainly is bearing fruit. When you have spiritual understanding, you will be bearing fruit because you will have worked the word in your life, hearing and doing it consistently, and it will bring forth fruit in your life. Because how does fruit come? Because the seed gets in the ground, it grows and works over time to produce the fruit. The seed is the Word of God. How is the Word in us working over time? We're hearing and doing it. We've got to be doing it. It didn't produce fruit overnight, just all of a sudden. It produced because we hear and do the Word continually. And that's what produces spiritual understanding because we have been a doer of the Word such that we've worked it in our life. And that's why it produces fruit. And when you come to spiritual understanding, it will surely and certainly be bearing fruit in your life and bringing forth the hundredfold, sixty or thirty, fruit, more fruit, and much fruit in our life. To let you know that this is not talking about mental understanding. If it was just talking about understanding from a mental standpoint, does the word automatically bear fruit just because I understood it? No, you've got to be hearing and doing it. You got to be acting upon it, working it in your life for it to bring forth fruit ongoingly, remember. So this is talking about spiritual understanding that comes because of hearing and doing the word consistently. And this is all of the heart. It's the word gets into our heart and it produces this spiritual understanding in our life. Now, we also need to understand that Job chapter 38 indicates that this spiritual understanding is going to come into our heart. While remember knowledge, the word is, is now pleasant to our soul in Proverbs it talks about. And so here we see in Job 38 it does indicate where it tells us that understanding is. Who has put wisdom in the inward parts and who has given understanding to the heart? That's where it's coming to. It's coming on the inside of us, in our heart. So understanding is going to come to us, and it's going to be imparted to us. Here in Job 39, verse 17, look what he says. Because God has deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. It's imparted. It's not just something that you gained as such just by knowledge. It's actually imparted to you because you've been hearing and doing the Word, and then it's going to be, God's going to give you that understanding because you've met the condition, so to speak, in order to see the spiritual understanding come to pass in your life. And that is so important. One of the scriptures we looked at before, but it's important to realize, how are you going to come to the place of getting a good understanding? Psalms 111 verse 10 says this, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that are doing His commandments. His praise endureth forever. If you're doing the Word, that's ongoing, isn't it? You're working the Word in your life. That's the person that's going to come to a good understanding. And as this word comes into you and you take hold of it and begin to operate in it, it's going to produce this in your life. It's the word that has to come into you and stay there as you walk in line with the word of God. Psalms 119, 130, the entrance of thy word gives light, brings the light, revelation, knowledge. 
and it will give understanding unto the ones who are open-minded, that are simple really means open-minded. These are the ones that are going to be taking hold of it, and they're going to be acting upon it, working it in their life. It will give understanding to us because it's only going to come through the activity of the Word working in our life. Now, another thing that's important is over in Proverbs chapter 2. He says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so you get the Word in you, you incline your ear into wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. This is of the heart on the inner man on the inside of you. We're not talking about your mind, not mental understanding. It's of the heart that's been imparted to you. If you cry after knowledge, which you're going to, lift up your voice for understanding to God to give this, impart this to you. If thou seekest her as silver and search for her as hid treasures, this is, this is the most important thing for us to get after, then you'll understand the fear of the Lord. You'll find the knowledge of God. God will bring this to you. Revelation, or Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. That means you have the commandments in you, and you're now to keep them, watch over them, guard them, as it says. That means you're keeping them. You're not letting the devil come and take it out because you're doing it. You're, you're not allowing any doubt, unbelief, or, or get in any areas of sin so the enemy can come and take the word out of your heart. He goes on. He says, length of days, long life, peace, they'll add to you. Let my mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man as you walk in the ways of the Lord, then you're going to see that. God's going to give that. He'll give, give you understanding, and you also have favor and good understanding in the sight of man as well, because you're doing what the Word says and walking in it. And these are things we're to get. We get revelation knowledge as we hear the Word and thank the Holy Spirit for revealing the, to us, but we also need to get wisdom and understanding. Proverbs 4, 5 says, get wisdom, get understanding. It's important for us. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. It's all going to come through the word of God that you're hearing and doing. Forsake her not, she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee or watch over thee. Wisdom's the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom with all thy getting, get understanding. So getting wisdom, getting understanding, that's all going to come. It's going to be imparted by God because you've been hearing and doing the word. You've been working the word in your life and being obedient to it. Now, another thing that's important is that you must be correctable. People that aren't correctable are never going to get the spiritual understanding because they got to come in line with the Word for Him to be before He's going to impart it to them. Proverbs 15, 32. He that refuseth instruction, a discipline changing, ch chastening or correction, he's despising his own soul instead of letting God work to bring forth what He purposes. He that heareth the reproof, the correction rebuke, he's going to get understanding because he's going to act upon it. He's going to do it, put the, incorporate it into his life. He's going to make the changes and come in line with the Word of God. And as he starts to do it, then that's how he's going to get understanding in his life. We also must realize that you must get understanding from the Lord if you're going to know the ways that he has for you. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Man's goings, or this is the word actually means his steps. If you see below here, it means step, steps, are of the Lord. So he wants you to have the steps. Are you figuring out your own steps? No. How can a man then understand his own way? He can't unless he gets the steps that are from the Lord to go walk in the right way of the Lord. And that brings us, of course, to how are we going to get the steps that we have to walk in? Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23 says, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It's not in man that walketh to direct his steps. You've got to get the direction from God. God will give you the direction of the steps that you're going to take. 
He brings revelation knowledge to you and bring purpose even in your heart. But the steps that you take are to be directed by Him. You are to be led by the Holy Spirit. He will direct you in the way that you go. We see also in Proverbs chapter 28. We must understand you can come to the place of having understanding in everything. Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord will understand all things. You will come to that. Because you're seeking the Lord, you're going to be seeking His Word, you're going to be praying, you're going to be doing what He says, you're going to be listening to Him, obeying Him, following after the way He has for you. And He'll give you understanding in all things. We can understand everything, as the Word of God declares. Now, we talked about a lot of these things, but now we're going to move on to talk about the effects of a lack of understanding and also the blessings that will come from having understanding. <clears throat> We already saw in Matthew 13, if you don't have spiritual understanding because of hearing and doing the word, which is what will produce fruit in your life, what's going to happen? The devil will come, the wicked one, he'll catch away the word that was sown in his heart. Now this tells you something. Anytime you hear the word, it gets in your heart immediately. The teaching that says it gets in your head and then finally drops down to your heart is a false teaching. It's gone forth in the body of Christ for years. It's the opposite. It gets in your heart immediately when you hear it. The key is keeping it there and not letting the devil take it out. The key will be to be doing the Word consistently. Of course, we talked about the last time that when tribulation or persecution, which arises because of the Word, if you get offended or stumble or sin or draw back from it, he's going to be able to take it out of your heart. Or if you let the, it's been working for a while, and then you let the care, the anxiety of this age, world means age, it's the word aeon. Or the deceitfulness of riches, it'll choke the word, and he'll become unfruitful. There'll be no fruitfulness. Because you didn't continue in the word, or you got, gave place to some area of sin and got your eyes off of it. You got affected by worry, anxiety, deceitfulness of riches, these kind of things. Or over in... Luke chapter 8, we see that in verse 13, talks about in time of temptation, a person could fall away. Why? Because they have no root. You've got to have the root system established. How do you get the root system established? We talked about that, hearing and doing the Word, so the foundation is laid, established in you. That is critical. But the guy with cares, riches, or even pleasures, desire for pleasures of this bios life, this natural life, he, he gets off track. He's not following what God wants. He's not going to bring any fruit to perfection. He'll end up getting wiped out in his life. So gaining spiritual understanding by hearing and doing the Word is the key to keep the Word in your heart. If you don't, the enemy can take it out of your heart. That's important to understand. Job chapter 17, verse 4. Thou hast hid their heart from understanding, therefore thou shalt not exalt them. Now why would they not get understanding? Either their heart's not right, or they haven't been doing the Word of God in some way, walking in it, or they've let cares or anxieties or temptation, they turned away, something they did. So that's why they didn't get the understanding. And notice, this tells you one of the blessings that will happen. You get exalted by God when you have the understanding because you've been hearing and doing His Word and working it in your life. But if you don't get the understanding, you will not be exalted. God will not exalt you because you haven't, part of getting understanding, remember, we talked about the last time, is being humble and submitted unto God. You must be humble. Pride, you'll never get uh, uh, exalted if you have pride. It's got to be rooted out of your life. Isaiah, uh, Job 42, verse 3. It's quite an interesting scripture here. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful me which I knew not. So he wasn't going to get the counsel. Why? Because he was speaking things <laughs> that were wrong. Remember, Job spoke a lot of things that were wrong. <laughs> he got rebuked. You speak a lot of things that are wrong, you're going to shut down God imparting things to you, His counsel, 
you're not going to see, of course, understanding. You're not going to see these things come to pass. You've got to watch the things you say. They better be in line with the word. They've got to be right. They can't be off track. That's important. We see in Psalms 82 something. We've got to be sure that we're, we have the word in us accurately, precisely, and we're speaking exactly that. Psalms 82, verse 5. Notice what it says. They know not. They haven't gotten knowledge. Neither will they understand. Of course, they won't because they haven't had the knowledge. They walk on in darkness. Otherwise, people that don't get knowledge and don't get understanding, they're going to be walking in darkness. Pretty much, they'll walk after the way of the world. They'll walk after the flesh. They'll walk after whatever seems right in their own sight, which will be sin. No, you can only walk in line with the way of the Word of God, the way of the Spirit, if you're going to get and have knowledge and be, have understanding imparted unto you. We see another scripture over in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 6. Anybody who has a problem with sexual sin needs to read these verses. Proverbs 6.32, Whosoever committeth adultery with a woman, he lacks understanding because he doesn't realize what he's doing. He that do, does it, he's destroying his own soul. He's bringing destruction against himself. You can't be involved in those kind of things. You're destroying yourself. And a wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. That means we have to make sure that we're not letting any of this kind of evil stuff get a hold of us. Do not ever yield to any kind of sexual sin. Now, if you've done in the past, I trust you've confessed it, you have repented, you've turned away from it, and you've, you've set yourself, you will never be involved in any kind of sexual sin, fornication, adultery, any of these things again. Here is another scripture that goes right along with that. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 7 Behold, among the simple ones, I discern among the youths a young man void of understanding. And there's a whole lot of them out there in the world today. <laughs> They're making mistakes left and right. Passing through the street near her corner, he went the way to her house. Oh, that's the way of destruction. In the twilight evening, in the black and the dark night, he met the woman with a tire of a harlot and subtle of heart. <laughs> well, it's going to be all over for him. And he, of course follows down the path of sexual sin, destroys himself. You can't allow that to happen whatsoever. Here's another scripture that's quite revealing. Proverbs 18, 2. A fool has no delight in understanding, because he's just walking after his own way. But that his heart may discover itself. He doesn't want to get any understanding, because then his, what's in his heart will be revealed. <laughs> But when you see, when you're seeking after God and you're following His ways and He'll part under, part, impart understanding to you, including things in your heart that need to be dealt with. Everything in our heart that's not of God needs to be dealt with. It needs to be discovered. A lot of people don't want to any, discover anything of their heart. They just want to carry on their own way. They'll never be right with God and never get spiritual understanding from Him if they don't come to the place of dealing with everything that is in His heart. It's all got to be rooted out. Proverbs 21 also tells us something in verse 16. It's quite a statement. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. This is a guy who had understanding, but he's turned away from it now. He's not walking in the Word any longer. He shall remain in the congregation of the dead. <laughs> he's in trouble. This is especially people that have gone into false doctrine, gone into false teachings on things and, or gone into the wrong uh, direction according to the things of the Word of God. They've turned away from it. They wandered out of the way. Now you're in the congregation of the dead. You're in trouble. You're not going to get revelation whatsoever. That's why we have to make sure we're not following any false tradition, religious traditions, any, anything that's contrary to the Word. We've got to be doing what is right. No doctrines of devils can get a hold of us whatsoever. That is mandatory. At the same time, we see over in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 16, the prince, and the word prince means the leaders. It's referring to the leader, as Jung brings out. The leader that is lacking, want me lacking here, understanding, because he didn't even have it himself, is also a great oppressor. He's oppressing the people. 
he that hateth covetous shall prolong his days. Anybody who's lacking understanding, he will be a great oppressor of people because he's not going to be walking in the ways of the Lord. He's going to be doing whatever seems right in his own sight. He's going to be, have his own agenda. We see this with lots of people out there, unfortunately. Whether you realize it or not, there's many pastors that have been gotten in all kinds of trouble sexually. I read it all the time. All types of things, not handling things properly, not handling relationships, getting, doing destructive things. If they don't have the understanding, they'll be oppressing the people and destructive things will happen to them. Now they can't have that happen. They've got to always walk in line with the Word of God at all times. Isaiah 27, verse 11. Here it speaks, when the boughs thereof are withered, they should be broken off. The woman comes, set them on fire. It means because there's nothing been good. For it's a people of no understanding. If we don't have understanding, what's going to happen? Read on. Therefore, he that made them will not have mercy on them, and he that formed them will show them no favor. No mercy and no favor for those that don't have understanding. How do you get understanding? By putting the word first place and hearing and doing it and walking in it consistently so it will be imparted to you. Is God going to just give mercy and favor to whoever? No. He's going to give it when you meet the conditions of being one who has understanding because you're hearing and doing the word. We talked about grace, mercy, and peace and the conditions that are necessary to see these things manifest in our life. And another thing we see, remember, these are the ones that are talking about how it hinders you from having seen the understanding come forth. Jeremiah 4.22, For my people is foolish. They've not known me. You and I are to know him. We're to come to the place of knowing him. As we hear and do the word, we get revelation, and he reveals himself, we get understanding. We will know him. We are to know him. Remember, the sheep that are following the shepherd, they know him because they're following him continually. They've not known me. They're sottish, which means they're foolish children. They have none understanding. They're wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. They'll be walking in wrong ways. We are to know God. And when we know God, by hearing and doing the word, we get spiritual understanding. We, and we come to the place of having wisdom, we won't be walking in any sin. We won't be doing any evil. We'll only be walking uprightly in obedience to God's Word, doing righteousness, and doing all the things that are right in His sight. We also see, and we looked at this before, but we'll look at it again. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Here is someone who knew God, because that when they knew God, well, they must have had some revelation, and they must have been hearing and doing the Word, and got some level of understanding to have known for Him to reveal Himself to them. They glorified Him not as God. You can't come and just follow God for a while and then decide, kind of get off track and start doing whatever you want to do. They glorified Him not as God. They weren't thankful anymore. You can't take God for granted, that's for sure. You've got to be thankful and praise and worship Him at all times. So they became vain, empty, and foolish here in their way of thinking. This refers to their thinking and their, their inward reasoning, the way they were perceiving things. And then it says they're foolish, and this word foolish is actually the word without understanding. It's a sunatos. A means without. Without understanding, heart is darkened. Well, there had to have been light in there at one time because they knew God. That means you can lose spiritual understanding because you're not doing what the Word says. Because remember, understanding is imparted to you by God, but if you don't continue in it, you can lose it, have it taken away. <laughs> Here, in this case, their un without understanding heart was darkened. And what happens? Usually they're just serving self now. They're following their own way. Professing themselves to be wise, thinking of themselves, and they became fools instead. What a mistake. And it talks about down here, they change the truth of God into a lie. Well, now they start believing lies and get off track of the word. And they worshiped and served the creature, talking about themselves, not more than. That's a mistake. It, in the Greek, it means rather than the creator. Basically, they're all about themselves now. Remember, 
You're bought with a price. You're not your own. You're a purchased possession. You cannot live unto yourself and be right with God. You have to live unto Him. There's no other way because you belong to Him. And so that this is why people get to this place. Destruction comes down their way. And what happened to these guys? They didn't want like to retain God in their precise, correct knowledge. Not in there. There is not there. If you notice the word there, it's italicized, but it's not in the Greek. They did not like to retain God in precise, correct knowledge. They didn't want it. They cast it aside. Now it's going to be trouble. And what will God do? He gave them over to a reprobate mind, unapproved mind to do the things that are not convenient. And that's exactly what happens to people. Now, let's talk about the blessings that'll come. When you get spiritual understanding, blessings are going to come because of the results of you hearing and doing the word. This is going to be imparted unto you. Look here where it speaks about the one who got the wisdom and understanding. Bezalel and Aholiab, every wise-hearted man in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding. And what does that produce? It gave them what they had to need so they know how to do things. So they know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary, according to all that God had commanded them. That shows you that when understanding and wisdom comes to you, you'll know how to do everything. You'll know how to accomplish things. It's going to be more than just getting knowledge. You're going to have to do the Word and to, to come to the place of having wisdom and understanding in your heart to be able to do these things. We also see what happened over here with Solomon, who started out right, remember. God did tremendous things. 1 Kings 3.9, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and man, that's what uh, good and bad, who is able to judge this thy people so great, great a people. Uh, and so he, he, he wanted this, and that was good. The speech pleased the Lord. And so in verse 11 he said, Because thou hast asked this, and hast not asked for thyself long life, or riches for thyself, or asked the life of thy enemies, thou hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment, I've done according to thy words, lo, I've given thee a wise and understanding heart. Remember, it's all about the heart, not in the mind. There was none like unto thee, neither after thee any rise unto thee. You should be seeking after it and wanting what God has for you to give you understanding so you will do the things that He wants you to do. Then you're going to see blessings are going to come upon you in your life. Another thing that's important is you need to have spiritual understanding as well of the times. And this will come progressively through the Word of God that's coming to you. And this is important for this day and hour as well. 1 Chronicles 12.32, The children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times. You and I have to have understanding of the times. Yet in fact, the church age, which began in, in 30 AD, is only two days long, 2,000 years ends in 2030 A.D. It's the end of the 6,000 year lease that Adam had and the end of the time when Satan has been able to rule and reign because of that lease was given over into his hands. And that's the time when Jesus is going to open up the title deed to the earth and he is going to then begin to bring the judgments that are going to be happening in the earth as he takes back the earth and brings the millennial reign. We're coming to that point. Look at what they're doing in the nations. They're all ready and for war. I mean, they're all arming themselves to the teeth. And there's so much contention in all these things. It's the devils that are driving them to bring them to this place. All these things are on the horizon. So you and I must be understanding the times so we know what to do. And the key will be for you to build your spiritual house, come to the place of being righteous, holy, conquering, walking in His ways, because only those ones that are righteous and holy, they'll come through protected in the days to come, and they'll pass the, the judgment on the church that comes first. These things are all important to understand. <clears throat> first Chronicles chapter 22, verse 11. He said, Now, my son, the Lord be with thee, and prosper thou, and build the house of the Lord thy God, as he has said of thee. That's all pointing towards, in the New Testament, we're building the spiritual house of God in us. 
Only the Lord give thee wisdom and, un wisdom and understanding, give thee charge concerning Israel, that thou mayest keep the law of the Lord thy God. If you're going to be able to build the spiritual house in you, you're going to have to need wisdom and understanding, and you're going to keep the New Testament law of the Lord, which is the law of Christ that we're under now in the New Testament, remember. And that's a perfect law of liberty, not one that brings bondage. It's one that brings total liberty and victory in our life. We see also, when you walk in the ways of the Word of God, God will bring you out, and you get spiritual understanding, and you walk up, He'll bring you out of error. Teach me, and I will hold my tongue. We need to do that. Cause me to understand wherein I've erred. As you're being taught, then God's going to bring revelation to you of any places where you've erred, where you've gone astray, where you've gotten off track, because He wants to bring you in line. He wants to correct you. He wants you to come in line with the Word so you'll walk uprightly in His ways. We also see pride has to be dealt with. It is absolutely essential. And He will deal with all pride. Job 26, 12, He divides the sea with His power, and by His understanding He smiteth through the proud. As spiritual understanding is coming to you, it's going to deal with every bit of pride in your life. You're going to come to humility. Only those who are humble before Him are going to be exalted, remember? Only those that are humble before Him are going to come through victorious. Also, through the spiritual understanding, you're going to come to the place of having done the Word. You're going to depart from all evil. You're going to walk free from all sin. You're going to be walking in righteousness and holiness. Job 28, 28, the man said, then to the man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that's wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Because when you have spiritual understanding, because you're hearing and doing the Word, you understand you cannot be continuing in evil or judgments are going to come upon you. You know, if you sin willfully after you've got the knowledge of the truth, nothing but for looking for a fearful looking of judgment coming. Departing from evil. Also, in Psalms 119, verse 27. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. The more spiritual understanding you get from hearing and doing the Word, the better witness you'll be. You'll be talking of the wondrous works, you'll be doing them, and you'll be able to witness effectively because you will have come to the place of spiritual understanding, having done the Word and worked it in your life and seen the promises of God coming to pass in you. Another thing. As you come to understanding, you're going to be doing the Word consistently. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law, yea, I'll observe it with my whole heart. Those people that get understanding, they're going to be doing the Word. They're going to be observing it, making sure they're guarding it, observing it, taking heed to it with their whole heart, not half-heartedly. You're going to do the Word consistently in your life. And when you have understanding, you're going to come to the place, you're going to hate everything that's not of God, every false way. Psalm 119, 104, through thy precepts I get understanding. I therefore I hate every false way. You don't want to have anything to do with anything that's false. You're going to turn away from it. You're not about to walk in anything that's contrary to the ways of the Word of God. That is so important. We also see over in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5, a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain to wise counsel. You're going to get wise counsels. You're going to have the counsel of God that's going to come to you, and you'll be able to give it out to others as well, because you have got to come to the place of understanding, because you've heard the Word. This is why you got, you, just getting knowledge is not going to make you being able to give out counsel. You've got to have worked this thing in your life, so you have true revelation and understanding imparted to you from God, because you're only going to speak the things that He says. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 11 also tells us something. Discretion shall preserve thee, and understanding shall watch over you. It will. It will watch over you in your life. Because you won't be walking contrary to the Word. You'll be doing what the Word says. And what will it do? To deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh froward things. You're not going to be affected by what other people do. 
because you're going to walk in understanding. You're not going to be given place to sin. You're going to be walking in his way of the word of God working in your life. We also see in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13, Happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. Happy really means blessed. You're going to be blessed when you get wisdom and blessed when you get understanding. Why? Because you're hearing and doing the word. God's blessings are going to be coming upon you. You're going to see God accomplishing tremendous things in your life. At the same time, your mouth is to make sure it's speaking right things. Proverbs 10, 13. In the lips of him that has understanding, wisdom's found. That's in the lips of him. That means you're going to be speaking right things. We should only be speaking things that are in line with the Word of God when we have understanding. But a rod is for the back of him that's void of understanding. That's why you got to watch what you speak. You let your words be few. you got to be sure you're only speaking right words. You can't be speaking. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but only that that ministers grace to the hearers. Edification, remember. But the right things are so important. Well, that brings us to the next point. If you have understanding, you're going to watch what you say. Proverbs 11, 12. He that's void of wisdom despises his neighbor, but a man of understanding, he holds his peace. He didn't get into strife. He didn't get into contention. He didn't blurt out a bunch of things and just say his own mind upset and whatever he wants. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He's going to hold his peace. Learn to only speak right things at the right time, right words, and the things God wants, not from your own thinking. That is important. Proverbs chapter 13, you see, you can cause yourself all kinds of problems because it wasn't the right thing to speak. Proverbs 13, 15, good understanding gives favor. When you have understanding, you're going to get the favor of God. Remember, get favor with God and favor with man. But the way of the transgressors is hard. That's right. It's a way of destruction that's going to happen to them. That's for sure. Proverbs 14, verse 6. A scorner seeks wisdom and finds it not, but knowledge is easy unto him that understand it. Because the more you get spiritual understanding, you're gonna, you have a lot of revelation. You've been working the Word in your life, and then when you come, more knowledge, you'll be, you'll be able to pick it up quickly. It'll be easy for you to receive it and to obtain it because you have so much already. And it's just adding more knowledge to what you've already gained. That's why it will be a process, remember, little by little. Now, at the same time, if you have understanding, there shouldn't be a problem with getting angry. No. Proverbs 14, 29. He that's slow to wrath is of great understanding. We shouldn't be getting up wrath, upset. We don't realize you're doing destructive things to yourself and to others is just with your attitude. He that's hasty of spirit, he exalts folly. You have to be watched. Don't be so hasty to, do, to speak things or impatient, short with people. This means, actually. And you're short and impatient with people. You're, how, how's that, how is that going to minister to people? No, it's going to be destructive. You can't let that happen. When you have understanding, you'll, you, you won't be falling for that. You won't be getting in wrath and you will be watching the things that you speak. Another thing that when you have understanding, what are you going to be doing? Well, you're going to be seeking more knowledge so you can do more word and get more understanding and get wisdom. You want to be increasing in all these things. <coughs> Excuse me. Proverbs 15:14. The heart of him that hath understanding, he seeks knowledge. He's seeking after knowledge. But the mouth of fools will be feeding on all kind of foolish things. No. We get rid of all that. We're only seeking one thing. We're seeking the knowledge of God. We're seeking God. We're walking in all his ways. That's it. He's first place. And we're hearing and doing the word. Anybody that's not walking after the way of the word, he is spinning his wheels in his life and walking in foolish ways. Proverbs 15, 21, Follow, folly is joy to him that's destitute of wisdom. He does all these foolish things. But a man of understanding, he walks uprightly. He's walking that straight and narrow path, uprightly, uprightness of heart. That's the way we're going to walk. See, these are the blessings that come when you are, have understanding. You will be walking uprightly because it's been God's done a work in your heart. It's imparted unto you. You know what's right. It's so in you that you will only be walking in the right way. 
because you have conformed your life to walk in line with the Word of God. Proverbs 16, verse 22, tells another blessing. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that had it. Life's going to be coming up out of you. Life's in you, going to be in you. It's going to be coming up out of you as you speak it to other people. But the instruction of fools is folly. Uh, we can't be speaking anything that's wrong or giving any instruction of, of, that's not in line with the Word of God. Also, you have understanding. God considers you having an excellent spirit, which in the New Testament would be an excellent heart because we got a brand new spirit already. It's in Proverbs 27, 17, 27. He that has knowledge spares his words. He watches what he speaks. A man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. That's what we want. We want to have an excellent spirit at all times. Everything we do is right. And then he goes on in verse 28, even a fool when he holds his peace is counted wise. <laughs> there are some people that are fools that will count and hold their peace. But he that shuts his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Remember, if you don't have something to say that it's in line with the Word of God, that this God wants you to speak, that'll be wisdom for you to speak, don't be speaking it. Make sure you're only speaking right things. We see in Proverbs 19, see, understanding will bring you to the place you won't be speaking these things. So if any of these things you say, well, I've been speaking things I shouldn't and I'm not walking uprightly like I should and, and I do get angry and upset and wrath and so forth, well, got some work to do to get the word in you and hear and do it and conquer and overcome these areas, cast out those devils, get yourself so filled up with the word so you're doing the word. You get this understanding be imparted to you. That word will be working in you and you'll come to the place where you're going to put these problems under your foot and eliminate them. Proverbs 19, verse 8. He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. Meaning, you've got to keep it. You've got to guard it. This is Shamar. Guard it. Otherwise, you could lose it. We already saw you could lose it. You've got to keep it. How do I keep it? Because it's my lifestyle. It's my, what I hear and do. It's the way I always am. I just didn't do it for a while and then back off because maybe I saw something good happen or a promise came to pass or a blessing or something. No, this is your lifestyle. Remember, you're becoming like Jesus. You're becoming like Him. That is what we do. We're going to be keeping understanding. Then, of course, you're going to find good. God sees your track record. Your track record shows who you are. That is so important. Verse 25. Smite a scorner, and the simple will beware. Reprove one that has understanding, and he will understand knowledge. He'll be acceptable to it. Uh, but the people, though, that are not teachable or not correctable, they won't, they won't respond to the knowledge whatsoever. And it's, it's sad. Many people are not correctable today. You try to bring them truth and try to help them and point out things that they need to know. They need to be receptive to it. To share it with them, it's about all you can do and point it out to them. Proverbs 20, verse 5, Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out because it'll, God will bring it out because he's imparted that understanding and it will be brought out at the appropriate time speaking the right thing in order to minister to people effectively. Proverbs 24, verse 3, through wisdom is a house builded. And we're building our spiritual house, remember. And by understanding, it's established. It gets firm. It gets stabilized. That's why you've got to get wisdom and understanding. That's how you're going to build your spiritual house and get it so stable and established. Nothing's going to shake you. You're going to get strong. You're going to get mighty. You're going to have the promises of God. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all the present, precious and pleasant riches. Knowledge understanding and wisdom is necessary for you to build your spiritual house. Proverbs 28, verse 2. For the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof, but by a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof shall be prolonged. Otherwise, or what he, the situation that he's come to, it'll be prolonged. Why? 
because this is what his, his, his lifestyle is. He, had, he has understanding, he has knowledge, and things will be prolonged continually. Everything will go on. Everything will be fine. Otherwise, you can stay in that state that you're in continually. You don't have to be up and down, wavering, one minute on, one minute off. <laughs> no. The man of understanding knowledge, the state will be prolonged. It will be set. Continue on. That's the way you're to live. You're to be like, live that way, like holy and righteous and upright and perfect heart and hearing and doing the word, speaking right things. Remember those six things that were on Jesus were the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge, the counsel, uh, the fear of the Lord, the might, all those things. They're to be in us, operating in us at all times. Verse 5. Evil men understand not ju judgment, but they, we saw this before, they that seek the Lord understand all things. You can understand all things. Don't think you can't. God wants you to understand all things. In fact, we saw this before. And, and before when we looked at this in 2 Timothy 2, verse 7. Consider why, what I say. The Lord give thee understanding in all things. He's going to give it to you. You can't get it yourself. He's going to give it to you. And this is actually his desire. This isn't a promise in a sense because the word give is not in a saying like a promise. It is what's called the optative mood in the Greek. The optative mood is a mood indicating his desire of what he wants to do. God desires to give you understanding in all things. And he will if you meet the conditions and you do what the word says. He wants, he wants us to have understanding. He says get understanding, get wisdom. All these things are to be given to us. And when you get understanding and wisdom, you will be exalted. Deuteronomy 1.13, he said, Take you wise men and understanding. Find people with wisdom and understanding, and known among your tribes. I'll make them rulers over you. They are going to be exalted into positions of authority. You're not going to take someone that doesn't have understanding and wisdom and put them in any position. No way. You've got to only get the ones that are going to be qualified for that and have seen the work of God come forth in their life. That is what he wants. Also, when we talked about Nehemiah some time ago, we mentioned this, and we've talked about this since. You must understand in relation to the times that we're in. In Nehemiah chapter 8, in verse 2, this is where Ezra brought the law before the congregation of the men and women, all that could hear with understanding. If they could hear with understanding, that means that these guys must have been hearing and doing the word in some aspect to be receptive to this understanding being imparted to them. And notice what it says upon the first day of the seventh month. Why is that important? The seventh Hebrew month is Tishri. That is a revelation of the end time work that is being accomplished in the church. If you understand about the Hebrew months, the first Hebrew month was Nisan, and that's the time when the three, first three feasts of the Lord were fulfilled by Jesus. Passover, on the very day of Passover, the Passover lamb, unleavened bread, bore away for three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, and then first fruits, having been the firstborn from spiritual death to spiritual life, the first fruits, it went up to heaven. He was that first fruit. And then we see Pentecost was left to that, and that was in the third month. That was when the Holy Spirit was poured out so people who were alive could get born from above. Those have all been fulfilled. There's three more feasts. See, the first four feasts are all fulfilled in the first coming of Jesus. The last three are fulfilled in the second coming of Jesus, which is trumpets, catching up in the church to meet the Lord in the air, the Day of Atonement, which is the judgment, that's the Day of Judgment, and tabernacles, which is the tabernacles, the coming to tabernacle and establish the millennial reign. This all happens in the end when the seventh month is fulfilled. Now, we're talking, when any time you see the seventh month, you pick up your uh, ears and eyes for a moment <clears throat> and th realize this is something that has a prophetic revelation of the work done in the end time church. So here on the first day of the seventh month, aha, he read before, before the street that was before the water gate from morning till midday. Well, that's morning means here the time of light of day or daybreak. So that'd be like six in the morning. Midday would be noon. 
That's six hours before men and women. They were hearing the word for six hours in a row. <clears throat> and those that could understand, the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. This all points out to all those ones who understand the times and they know they got to get the word in them. You're going to get the word in you. So you get the understanding and they're attentive to it. And they're, these guys are they're setting their agenda to hear the word of God. Six hours. And here they all these guys they were together. He opened up their sight of all the people, and the people all stood up. That's the reason we stand up, because we honor the word of God when we, when we bring, they come it forth. And he talks about all these ones that caused the people to understand the law. The people were, stood in their place. They were understanding all these things. So they read in the book of law distinctly, gave them the sense, and caused them to understand the reading. And also, it brought these people to repentance as well because the people wept when they heard all the words of the law and they realized they'd been walking in sin. Because you have to realize God's coming to the end time church to teach the truth, truth to, the word, to the church, to come to the place of knowing the word, getting the word in them, and coming to repentance in all areas of their life because he's going to have a holy people. And that's exactly what happened to these ones. At verse 12, they went their way to eat, drink, send portions, make great mirth, because they had understanding the words that were declared unto them. And you get understanding. And the understanding comes to them. And they continued on. Even the second day, they gathered the same way to come to get the understanding ongoingly. This means the end time church is going to come to the place of getting the understanding of the word of God. We come over to chapter 9. And here, he says, the seed of Israel separated themselves from all the strangers, stood, confessed their sins and iniquities of their fathers. They, they realized we've been walking in the ways of sin. And they had to separate themselves from that which is not right. God is going to bring a separation. Those who are going to follow the Lord and those who aren't. Only those who are going to follow the Lord, who are righteous and holy, are going to be with him, not the others. They stood up in their place and they read in the book of the law, their God, one-fourth part of the day. Remember the day is 12 hours, so one-fourth part of the day would be three hours. And another fourth part they confessed. <laughs> they had a lot of sin to deal with, I guess. And worship the Lord their God. Everything. God wants you to get the word in you, and he wants everything that's not of him out of your life. We're to confess all sin, we're to repent, we're to turn away from it, get it worked out, get it written out of our life. Every bit of it. He wants it all out. And these people came to the place, we see in chapter 10, verse 28, the rest of the people, the priests, Levites, porters, singers, that's all they that separated themselves from the people of the lands. They aren't going to walk after the way of the world any longer. We're separate from the world. We're not of this world. We're, we're citizens of heaven. We are ambassadors, foreigners in this place, ambassadors for Christ, foreigners, strangers, under the law of God. Their wives, sons, and daughters, the whole family. Everyone having knowledge and having understanding. They separated themselves unto God because of the knowledge and the understanding. And they walk, walked in the way of the Lord. And they claved to their brethren here. And they even entered into a curse, into an oath to walk in God's law that was given by them. They got committed to walk in it. The end time church is going to deal with everything in their life. And they're going to walk in the way of the word of God and do what is right in his sight. Absolutely essential. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 24. Let him that glorieth glory in this, he that understandeth and knoweth me. That's what counts. You're to know him and to understand him. That I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. You and I are going to come to know him. We're to know him and walk in all of his ways and become like him. That is the end time church that's going on to perfection, that's going to come to that place. Remember that God is bringing revelation to the entire body of Christ that they're to walk in his ways. Colossians 1.28, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, 
that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. We are going on to perfection. Remember when the foundation's laid, we're going on to perfection. Who's doing that work? God is in you. God will do the work in you as you obey and carry out everything that he tells us to do. Remember Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed. See, the proof of us is whether we're obedient, remember. The proof of you is whether you're obedient in all things. As you've always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. This is what we are doing. We are working out our own salvation, ongoingly, present tense, in obedience to his command, imperative mood, with fear and trembling. And when we're do, always obeying, what's happening? It's God who is actively operative. That's the word, Greek word is energeo. Actively operative in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He accomplishes the work as you do the word. You just hear and do the word and put him in operation and he will accomplish it. Because you can't do the work yourself. You do the word, so he does the work. You think you can produce any of this? You can't produce righteousness or holiness. You can't produce the promises. God's the one who produces it all in your life. But how do you put him in operation? You hear and do his word. That's the way he works to bring all these things to pass, and that is so important. And as you do what the word says, you are going to come to the place of your, you're going to know what the will of the Lord is in every situation. We shouldn't wonder. We should come to the reality of this. Ephesians 5, 7, uh, 5.17, Wherefore, be not unwise, we're not supposed to be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. We should understand the will of the Lord. And we will when we walk in His ways because he, we're knowing Him. We're being imparted with wisdom and understanding. He know all His ways. We're walking and we're coming like Him. We're understanding the will of the Lord. That's what God has for every single one of us. And just in summarizing some of these points that are important to have spiritual understanding, is getting the Word in your heart, keeping the Word there by hearing and doing it and gaining spiritual understanding, always believing that Word, taking hold of it. In fact, we even might just look at some of those uh, Scripture, the good ground back there in Matthew 13. This is, this is the one who has the spiritual understanding, remember, as it said. The guy who has the spiritual understanding, he's the one that surely and certainly is bearing fruit and bringing it forth hundreds, thirty, sixty, and thirtyfold. Well, we see other aspects to this in Matthew chapter, uh, or chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 13, or uh, Mark chapter 13, Mark chapter 4, sorry. Mark chapter 4, here in verse 20 on the good ground. This is the one who heard the word, receives it, brings forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. He's receiving the word, meaning he's taking it up near to him, this means. And then over in Luke's count, it tells us even something more. Luke chapter 8, down here in verse 15, They on the good ground are they which in an honest and a good heart, an excellent, kalos is excellent, and a good heart. You've got a heart that's upright. An excellent and an upright heart. See, that's why God would put understanding in your heart and wisdom in your heart and part it to you because you've dealt with everything in your heart and you're walking in line with the Word and that's what's in you. Having heard the Word, they keep it, meaning they're retaining it. They're holding on to it. They're not allowing anything to take it away from them. They're retaining it. Well, how can you retain it? Well, you're not going to give place to any of the attacks of the enemy. You're not going to give place to any kind of temptations any kind of tribulation or pressure or persecution or cares of this world, lust of other things, pleasures for other things, deceitfulness of riches, any of the things that cause the Word to be choked out. And also He brings forth fruit with steadfastness. And this is another important part. Patience is hupomone, which is steadfastness. And steadfastness refers to that of the soul. Steadfastness in the soulish realm. The reason we know that Luke 21, 19 tells us, in your steadfastness, same word, hupomone, 
possess ye your souls. You will possess control in the soulless realm through the Word of God that you're hearing and doing that's now written in your heart and mind so your soul, which is your will and like emotions, doesn't get off track. You see, if you have spiritual understanding, you're going to operate in the Spirit according to the Word. You're not going to be operating according to the way you feel out of your emotions or according to the way you're thinking, not considering what the Word says or choosing to do things that I want to do without what God wants. No. Your soul is to be totally submitted and yielded unto Him and in line with the Word of God because we walk in spirit, remember, at all times. So steadfastness is another thing that's important. All these things are important for you to come to spiritual understanding that will bring forth fruit in your life. And that is what he wants. So as you're continually doing the word, you get the root system established. You conquer everything that comes against you, any kind of attacks, you overcome them. You're growing up, you're overcoming everything. You're going to overcome anything and everything. You get to the place where you, you're prepared and ready to deal with any attacks that come against you, including your mind, where you take every thought captive. You bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and you're prepared and ready to revenge the disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. This is all because you get your mind set. You continually have an excellent, upright, good heart. And as we talked about the other time, you don't ever let your heart be hardened. Hardened, Then, of course, then you'll not have the understanding or the wisdom of God whatsoever. Doing the Word will be the key for you to have spiritual understanding. These tremendous blessings will come upon you in all areas of your life. And remember, this is all of the heart. God's looking on the heart when He sees that your heart's right. You won't be reacting with all these things. You won't be hasty to be angry. You won't be having wrath. You won't be getting all upset. You won't be speaking wrong words. You'll be shutting your lips. You'll be only speaking wisdom and counsel, right things out of your mouth, because you've come to the place of understanding, because you're a hearer and a doer of the word. The word's incorporated into your lifestyle. That's the way you think. That's the way you speak. That's the way you walk. That's the way you handle everything. That's where God is bringing every one of us to. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the Word of God that is at work in my life. As I gain revelation knowledge through study of the Word, the Holy Spirit revealing the truth of the Word to me, writing it in my heart and mind, I thank you that as I hear and do the Word, I walk in line with it. I conquer all enemies. I see that the Word is coming to the place of my lifestyle. It's my track record. As I'm hearing and doing it, God imparts understanding to me in my heart. And I come to the place of understanding what to do because I have a track record. I've worked it in my life. It's become my lifestyle. I've overcome the enemies, and I've seen God's working to bring me to the place of imparting spiritual understanding. And then I go on to have wisdom so that I walk in all the ways of the Word of God, and I see God's working accomplished in my life. So I'm going to get knowledge, I'm going to get spiritual understanding, and I'm going to get wisdom as I'm hearing and doing the Word in all areas of my life. I thank you that you will impart it to me when I've met the conditions and I will hold on to it. I will not let myself lose it by turning away from the word. I will retain the word. I will be steadfast in the soul so nothing comes in that causes me to turn away from walking in line with the word of God. As I am a hearer and a doer of the word of God, and have spiritual understanding, the devil will not be able to take the word out of my heart. It'll be established in me, and I will see God's blessings, the favor of God, the mercy of God, exalting me, accomplishing everything that he purposes for me in my life, and operating through me as I minister to others. Thank you. I'm growing up in knowledge, and I'm a hearer and a doer of the word, Thank you for imparting spiritual understanding unto me. 
and I will walk in it and never lose it. And I will see your wisdom come to pass as I am a hearer and a doer of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Father, thank you for helping everyone to understand that understanding, spiritual understanding, is not having a mental understanding. It is imparted by God to us in our heart, having met the conditions, seeing our life conformed to his way, hearing and doing the word that brings forth fruit because when we have understanding, then we are surely and certainly being a fruit bearer. Thank you, Father, for everyone putting the word first place. And thank you, Father, for anything that's in our heart that has to be rooted out. We're dealing with everything. So we get rid of anything that would hinder us. We're walking in all your ways. Thank you, you're establishing us in spiritual understanding, showing shown forth by our track record and our walk consistently in our life. Thank you for establishing us in all in this. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, we come